Staying with our story, electricity consumers, labor unions and key stakeholders in the economy have kicked against the increase in electricity tariff implemented by power distribution companies across the country. The Nigeria Labor Congress NLC, which vows to resist the increase, the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, which said the hike could precipitate recession in the third quarter of the year and the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. The NLC said the hike would further impoverish Nigerians. The Congress argued that the implementation of the new tariff on Tuesday was despite the resolution of the Senate and the direct orders of the President that the decision by the electricity distribution companies on tariff should be suspended until further notice. NEC and the Discos had said that the new service reflective tariff took effect from September 1. Now, to help us understand some of the developments in this particular issue, we're joined by Afola B. Akiro Gunde. He's an energy expert. Also joining us on the conversation this morning is Rumundaka Wunodi, a founder and CEO, ZKJ Energy Partners Limited. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us um, on The Breakfast. Now, I'll, I'll start with you, Mr. Akiro Gunde. Uh, NAS, sometime in June, had stopped the planned increase in tariff um, and moved it to 2021. And now we're having this, I mean, effective September. What, what may have changed? Well, um, as you recall, um, back in June we had the we were we were neck deep in the throes of the um, of the coronavirus right. pandemic at that time, and of course it would um, it would have been um, very very sensitive for us to have had another layer right. of um, of challenges being put on the average person by the government via so tariff increases. So, which is can you still hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, excellent, excellent. So, 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 so that would have been the the logic at that time. I pushed it on to on to twenty twenty one. However, probably there were there were a few things that may have happened within the wheels of governance between between June and now, which may have uh, resulted in. Um, of course, I can I, I can answer that guess as to what 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 those are, but but um, but the government obviously obviously made a change and. Um, and, and we are where we are today. This looks to me pretty much like a midway arrangement between having a full-blown implementation of the MITO regime and the government deciding to manage the impact such an, such an implementation would have on the majority of the masses of the country. So, so I think more or less this is a, a midway between what, uh, what we're talking about, what we had then, and where the government hopes to take the country in another maybe six, seven, eight months. Uh, Mr. Wanodi, why do you think uh, NEC and DISCOs may have decided it was necessary to increase, uh, increase tariffs at this time? Um, thank you very much for having me. Uh, you know, the, uh, the government and the industry is working with what we call the Power Sector Recovery Plan. And um, some of the uh, the major item on that um, plan is restoring or bringing about performance uh, measurement within the industry. So the discos were to have some performance improvement plan, and all that will be predicated on them having a cost-reflective tariff in the market. Again, uh, the federal government had also indicated that come 2021, they want to exit the subsidy regime for the industry. And therefore, um, they need to also uh, transition the market to a cost-reflective tariff. The World Bank, as part of that uh, plan, was going to uh, give, or well, had actually approved in June, $1.5 billion to support the industry. Again, uh, that loan was predicated on some uh, performance target, and some of that actually include what some of us had advocated in the past, a tariff that is tied to service. Uh, before now, people paid uh, 30 naira, 40 naira without any assurance of service, and therefore there is a need to move to a regime where if you pay 40 naira, it will indicate that you get about 12 hours or 16 hours a day, and if you paid more, uh, 
as a rate, you should get more. So it was time that this needed to go on. Uh, the, the tariff shortfall for the, uh, for the balance of 2020 uh, it was to be 360 billion. In deferring that I'm moving for three months, it had grown. So I think for government, uh, where the post is getting leaner, uh, they are hoping to stop the subsidy, especially the subsidy that goes to subsidize the rich and uh, maybe save the money and put them in other social programs like education and health. We hope that they do that. So uh, people who complain, actually, I would advise them that they follow the government to be sure what they do with the savings from subsidy rather than uh, insisting that government continues to subsidize uh, the very rich who consume most of the electricity and therefore benefit from the subsidy. What this rule says, and this regime is saying, is that if you get 12 hours, and you should be able to know whether you get 12 hours or 8 hours or 16 hours, if you do not, then you should not be paying the tariff that is there. So I think that this is an equitable regime of tariff that has been put in place, and with predictability and some utility, consumers uh, and businesses should do better. You know, uh, uh, as you're talking, a lot of questions was playing uh, in my mind as to, you know, this decision are often made without uh, consultation with relevant uh, bodies that would, you know, make um, necessary contributions that could help um, adjust the decisions that are being taken. For instance, last week, NEC announced that the presidency has ordered the phasing out of estimated billing and that every home should be metered that is the prepared metered. Could this be what was in the offing? And I put that to you, uh, Mr. Akiro Gunde. Well, it's obvious that you can put you cannot put in place uh, a cost reflective tariffing system without having meters. And of course, we know that the estimated metering challenge has been a key a key bottleneck in the industry for for a while. And there are a lot of solutions being being worked on. I remember when Mr. Wonod himself was, was in NEC, there was a lot of work being, being done towards resolving that challenge. However, however, it still remains that we still have that issue at hand right now, even if we still sort out the, the, the waivers and what have you at the, at, the, at the customs end. There are still a number of bottlenecks in-house within the discos, within the system today, that still make it a challenge. No, financing this without this this metering rollout and all of that that still, that still make it a challenge to still have meters in every single home. However, I we still applaud what what the what the president has has ordered. It reduces the cost of rolling out those meters and let us now begin to see. Hopefully, as the discos maybe with this regime we start getting some more money, we are able to roll out meters into into some of some of these areas, which of course not as attractive as the more as the more um, revenue leading part, part, part parts of their systems all right back to you mr wanadi uh, we are aware um of the struggle by discos to pay back loan could this be um could this be the reason uh, for this um a hike, so to speak, to offset the burden and the 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 the, the increase from twenty something to fifty something, or sometimes forty something naira, um, is that a little too much? That's uh, two questions for you. Um, I'm not quite sure what categories of uh, customers uh, that, uh, from what you just indicated, is going is, is going to experience a 100% hike in, uh, in tariffs. I, I, I don't know that there is uh, any, given what was uh, uh, initially approved. But however, uh, let me say that when these codes are not, uh, when there is no cost-reflective tariff uh, in the market, uh, it's usually not a burden on the distribution company. So it might sit on their book, but it is the government that is... Um, it's impeding that transition. Therefore, uh, the government would have one day or the other have to uh, uh, pay for the subsidy. Uh, the, so it's really not about the business. This is more about government uh, coffers, one. And secondly, uh, it is very difficult to hold the discos accountable to service level if you do not agree with them what the uh, tariff should be. So this is for the benefit of the customers and the ability of NERC to actually hold the 
this cause accountable. And it, it includes service and also metering, because that's a part of the improvement, the performance improvement plans that they put in place is how much and how many of the customers are they going to meter and what improvements in, uh, in power supply are they going to deliver, especially in terms of a number of hours of service. So uh, when you keep the tariff below what is required, government has to pay the subsidy and it's very difficult to hold the discourse accountable. Okay, and let me stay with you. What, what is the implication of this on the economy? We are um, in a very uh, dire situation from what economic experts have been predicting. And it, we're not expected to get off it. We're not, uh, we're not expected to see, you know, an increase in our revenue uh, base in, um, in, an, in any short period of time. So what are the ripple effects, not just on the economy, but on the people? What are these? Well, again, uh, let, let's go back to what we have today in the power sector. And what we're talking about a utility service. It's a service that its utility is driven by predictability and time of use. So if this tariff, which would actually take about a year uh, to put all the service levels together, uh, if this tariff is in place, most consumers will be able to plan better when to be uh, either at home or in the office to utilize this service. Today, you can never tell when the power shows up in your house. So where there is utility, then it might be actually more beneficial to consumers. And again, remember that the money that if the tariff is depressed, it means that the government is forced to use money that it could have used to put into healthcare, uh, even the COVID palliative and, um, and education and subsidizing the rich. Because what this has said, it says that if you do not experience power, uh, supply for more than uh, 12 hours, you should not. Now, these are the intents. I think that what we need is to make sure that we actually see this being implemented as it's intended, because that's really, to me, is where we, the challenge will be. That at the end of the day, if some discos were to take advantage of this and hike tariffs for people who ordinarily are not, uh, do not receive more than 12 hours of electricity. So, the, 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 the problem is not with the order itself or the regulation. I think it's on the implementation and monitoring. If there are savings from subsidy, where is government, you know, where is government putting that subsidy to work in the other parts of the economy? So that, that is the issue. There is never a good time to raise tariffs. But what is important is what the tariff is going to do if it's well implemented going forward. All right, uh, Mr. Akin Rogunde, um, what happened to the decision um, to shelve the proposed increase to next year in consideration of the economic realities? And uh, this decision was not just um, unilaterally taken. It was taken after seeming due consultation. Um, how do you expect the National Assembly to uh, react in, in light of the reaction that's coming from um, labor organizations? Well, again, again, as as we said, the 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 challenge is going to be: Are we going to sit down and and and, and let and get a full um, X percent increase in in tariffs nationwide first of January next next year, or are you going to migrate towards that that system? So, I think the government has chosen the option to slowly migrate towards that system, uh, in line with with the with the with the PSRP. Um, and again, as I've mentioned earlier, last time we spoke, this tariffing system is not 100% new. As variants variant of it has already been rolled out by some discos in, in, in some parts of the country since last year. Um, it is more or less a national rollout of this, uh, of this arrangement, enabling those who can pay higher tariffs to do so, while those who cannot are slowly migrated into it. And again, on the economic impact, really, it's going to be, it's going to be a chicken and egg ch challenge. While we have... Um, uh, parties who, who will feel this impact initially. You must also take into account 
the fact that uh, total power cost for the average Nigerian is not only your cost of your cost of um, of utility power, i.e., uh, your disco. It is also it also includes the cost of running your generator, whether it is your I better pass my neighbor or your bigger petrol petrol or diesel engine jet generators. So if you lump together the total cost of running power in Nigeria, what you pay for both utility disco and also and also your own privately generated power. If we have a well implemented well implemented and an orderly implementation of this process, then it might just work. The challenge I see is where you have you, you have these schools rogue, running rogue, so, so so to speak in this in, in this country, and you have a disco giving you, for example, twelve point one hours of power for one month, and then they start charging you the higher fees from the next month, and start giving you four hours or five hours a day. Those are the kind of things that we expect the neck to actually sit down and, and enforce. And, um, and make examples of the airing discos once this happens. And I see, because I see a lot of potential opportunities for abuse of the end, end user here. So that is where, and, uh, and of course, the NEC has a lot of work because if you've got discos across the entire country and you don't have, and you don't have a system in place by which you can monitor what is happening in every single segment, it becomes a challenge to, to, to actually enforce this. And I think the key challenge is going to be for the, for, for, for the NEC to actually wield the big stick, make examples of a few discos, because I think quite a few of them also need need need, need some need some challenges, and then and then we will see something positive happen. Yeah, um, there's an aspect of the question uh, that I didn't quite get your response to, and that is, uh, I mean, there's been a lot of reaction. Labour organisations are saying, no, we don't want this. Uh, the National Assembly is also on the same uh, part. Um, they've, uh, before now, we've not had a new reaction from them, but before now, we know that they were not in support. So now that this decision has been taken, I, I'm, I'm asking, um, these reactions, for now we have the labor union and um, other organizations coming up to say that this is not in the best interest of Nigerians. How do you expect the National Assembly to react? Because they were the ones that also came together and said, let's push this further. Yes, but, but the thing also is going to be, I, I expect that there would have been some engagement with the, with the National Assembly before, before this rolled out. I have not heard anything from them yet. Um, and of course, there is a lot of information with, which, 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 is, which has been shared at that higher level, which, which, which some parties may not have access to. But of course, we can, we, can, we can see that it is clear that if you have a path towards having a full mind tool, and then, and then you have this, the key thing at the end of the day is how you manage it. But however, you know this is politics. If you have, for example, a national, a national outcry against this and, and, and you've got strikes and you've got the average Nigerian reeling out against it because, of course, it's, it's clear that the average Nigerian today is, is beset by, by, by a lot of challenges. Um, and, of course, we, we have job losses. We've got the, the Naira's challenge against, against other currencies and, and all of that. And so if, if, if it, it really depends, really, on, on what the full effect of, of this is going to be on the final on on the average person. However, if what you see is that if the effect of this is well managed and it's not abused at the end of the day and the, and is rolled out on the parties who can afford to pay the higher rates, i.e. the parties who are already spending a hundred thousand naira for example a month using their own generators in combination or fifty thousand naira a month using their generators in combination with utility power. And the average man on the street doesn't see a major increase in his cost of living, i.e., with regards to power. Then, of course, the the issue may not be that high. So, 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 at the end of the day, I think it's going to be what the common man on the street says. Because if you if you leave it to the to the to the other parties, the NLC and what have you, they yeah. will always call them into a room and show them what the data is, and, and everybody will arrange something, will agree to something. But if you sit down and see what the average man on if the average man on the street the average man who is suffering and is struggling to even pay 3,000 naira a month power tariff, finds that 3,000 naira a month power tariff becoming 4,000 5, or 5,000 for some reason or the other, then and, then and then those kind of people start to complain. Then you have a, 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 a ripple effect that may then end up causing government to have, a, to have an, another think about it. But I think considering the fact, knowing the antecedents of the President Mohamedou 
Buhari as, as a person. It is clear that he's some is a gentleman who who has a social de de democratic leaning. I don't think he enjoys well, doing these kinds of things. Let, let, so let's stay with the opinion. effects on the average uh, bitter pills, which is, which is swallowing as a result of the challenges which we are facing at the moment. Because whether we, we like it or not, if you are generating power at two naira and you are selling power at one naira fifty copper, somebody has to pay for that yeah, fifty naira yeah, fifty yeah, copper. Yeah, yeah, but, um, and the I, government has been paying that. I, I want to take you back to something you mentioned, the, uh, the effect on the average uh, Nigerian. Um, they don't understand the technicalities. I'm sure a lot of persons watching don't really care much as to, you know, um, why this is this. They are more worried about why the government is, you know, presenting seemingly two different um, um, uh, decisions. There is a trust deficit already. And now we have a situation where you tell us, um, we, we are going, we've consulted and we're going to move this to at least uh, January to see how the economy, you know, re recuperates. And then before you know it, mm. the increase is announced almost with an uh, immediate effect. What is mm. your thinking? Mm. What rather in your yeah. thinking is going through the mind of the average Nigerian and how will that further damage that uh, trust um, issue between um, him and his government? Um, I think the results are going to start coming out in another two or three months. I think by the end of the year, we will see where we are in this regime. Um, if, by, if, if, if the neck is, uh, is, is up and doing, uh, is doing its regulatory work effectively, and you find out that the average person, for example, who was paying 3000 uh, and, and enjoying only four hours of power or five hours of power a day, is has not, uh, has, not, has not seen an increase in their tariff. Because that is what NEC is saying. By this, by, by this, by, by this, by, by this order, they are saying that if you are only enjoying less than twelve hours a day of power, you will not see an increase in your tariffs. Mm -hmm. So, so if the average person who is only enjoying five hours a day, four hours a day, eight hours a day of power, is is paying what he's paying, is what he's paying for now will not increase. Okay. So that is where we are. All right. However, if you find a situation where the this kind of person again is as his power, for example, for one month ramped up to 12 and a half hours of power, and then they, they jack up his tariff, and then the next month, he now starts enjoying his normal four or five hours a day, and neck doesn't come in to stop that kind of behavior, then you have the, the, the trust issues coming up, and the people making, making a lot of noise. So All I right. think the challenge is going to come when people start receiving their bills, between you and I, when people start receiving their bills and measuring against what they are getting, the end of this month, end of next month, end of October, November, or December. That's when I think we can then say, has this been a success or not? All right, let, let me bring Mr. One of the in. entity that needs to be managed here is the heck. Uh, let me bring Mr. One of the in. Before I go ahead and ask you, um, uh, um, I mean, a little uh, different... Um take another aspect of the conversation i want to take your quick reaction to um, the effect on the uh, ordinary nigerian just what i asked uh, mr akin rogunde um, what is the ripple effect how are nigerians going to accept this and how is it going to affect the trust deficit well i i, I think there is a, there is something to be said about uh, uh, what you call uh, the, the sudden introduction of this. Um, at times, one of the places we have struggled is the issue of consultation over a longer period. Uh, at times, uh, what happens is that uh, people in authority or uh, decide to quicken things because they, they want to get things done very quickly and, um, uh, and feel that consultation might delay an action that is required uh, to be taken, maybe to save the economy, to save subsidy, to do that. And at the end of the day, uh, what it does is that it pulls everybody back because uh, if, if there are uh, serious protests, then we go back and uh, things are not done right. So uh, consultation uh, is key, especially when it comes to uh, regulations like this. So, um, but I think that uh, there is work cut out for the distribution companies and NERC and everybody uh, to begin to engage uh, the different uh, constituencies in the market, you know, market within uh, the average Nigerian Labour Congress and, and sell this. Uh, let me say again that if this is well implemented, 
it should actually be more value for everyone. Because the worst attribute of the Nigerian power supply is its erratic nature. The fact that you cannot tell when power will show up in your house. If you do, then you might be able to manage your consumption and the utility of that product. When to be home, to wash, to iron, and when to go visit your neighbor because he's going to have power or visit your family. That means that you might not have to turn on that generator. But when you do not know when it's going to show up and for how long, then you have to depend on a generator because you never know. So if we transition to that, I think at the end of the day, in net effect, it should save people money and actually give them more organized life. As for the issue of um, uh, the manufacturing, labor congress, and a few other people, I think we have to do a little more work when it comes to following a process and interrogating it. The economy is not just about power, and I'm talking about, say, for manufacturing. It's also about road network. It's also about uh, rail. It's about infra other parts of infrastructure. So if you get cheap power and you do not have roads, then you're not doing very well. So you have to measure and balance the thing. I know that power, for instance, is being the one of the uh, highest cost input for manufacturing and for SMEs. But again, it is because they have to. They have to depend on alternative generation. But if this is done in the right way, then the power will show up for the world that during the day and then show up for the residents in the night. Instead of the way it comes, it shows up for everybody at any time. When the weather is done, the power comes to his office. Uh, that, that, that would not work. So right. if we have a service-based time of use tariff, it will make sense for everyone. What we need to do is to work with next, make sure there is transparency so that if I live in a particular area and I've been told that I'll get 12 hours, I know when. Everybody knows when. It is out there for that cluster. So when what do I not show up, we do not need next to tell us or to implement. We will have SMS as we say, Disco A promised to provide power. It's not, it has to be transparent. Yes. And that is the key way to get this working. Um, a, a lot you've said um, about managing um, the, I mean, the tariff and the likes is the level of supply. Um, so I, I want to ask, it, it, will there be, or rather, what is the connection uh, between the increase in tariff and power supply? Will we see a commensurate increase in power supply? Will the money being generated um, translate to more megawatts? Because something like that, I'm sure, would soothe uh, the um, minds of a lot of Nigerians. Well, well, complementary to uh, tariff increase, uh, you know that the government is put in place the um, presidential power initiative that seeks to expand the network. So the, the, uh, the deal with uh, Zimen to expand our transmission and the distribution network. Uh, it's also part of the uh, performance improvement plans of, uh, for distribution of its military and expansion of the network, uh, outage hours and things like that. So... Uh, complementary to that, we expect that um, with the Siemens deal, uh, we today have at least 8,000 megawatts that is available. Uh, if we expand that, the target is that by next year, we should have 7,000 instead of the 5,500 peak, we should have 7,000 on average. Uh, that is uh, uh, more than 25% uh, additional power, I mean, another two years. Uh, that will go. But everything, these are the plans, are, these are the targets. Again, uh, it's, uh, it's not a walk in the park. People need to uh, do some hard work, dispose, transmission company. And the consumers, we just need to follow them and make sure that things that are put in these tariffs, that we see some transparency to its delivery. So it makes no sense to say some clusters, we have 20 hours, some we have 12. We need to know the clusters. If I live in a particular cluster, I need to know when and how many hours and when it's showing up. So that with fellow consumers, we'll be able to tell the distribution company and tell NERC that this promise have been met or 
it has not been met. All right, Mr. Akira Gunde, the, it, I mean, the uh, spar supply for a lot of Nigerians would mm. be everything if it is consistent. Um, what would be your rating of the progress we've made in trying to improve Nigeria's uh, power situation? And where do you expect to see us? Maybe if you are to project in the next five years, would we still be talking about tariffs, meters, and the likes? I think um, probably in another few years, it will, it will really depend on, on political will. Um, really, if it, it, will, it will depend on political will. Uh, everybody knows what needs to be done in the sector. Uh, however, every every two or three years, we keep changing the rules of the game. Uh, the goalposts keep changing. However, if we stay the course, um, if, if, if a cost-reflective um, uh, tariffing system comes into play, if the, if the work being done towards towards upgrading the transmission infrastructure in the country is continued and a sustainable means of maintaining that infrastructure is also designed uh, if we continue if we also have a, a model that also enables us to also feed in to the system different 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 other models of having power supply i.e feeding in renewable energy feeding in some some models of captive power or what have you into the system such that the grid in another five six eight years stops becoming the central source of power then we can say that we have a system that works but of course right. the challenge with this kind of system is that once you have your your, your power supply becomes okay for four or five years if you do not move that goalpost and and look towards the next four or five years and plan and invest towards that then you find a situation where your system collapses again because the man that was using fan decides to, to use AC and the system becomes becomes loaded or your population continues to grow or people continue to invest in, 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 in industries and, and the load cannot take it. So I think it is a continuously changing goalpost. If we move, if we, if we, if we commit, and I think this is a great time to actually do this. The, the, the Buhari administration still has about three years. So if they can commit during those three years to swallow some bitter pills, to enable some things be done to save this sector, then we can actually have a sustainable industry going forward. But, but if we sit down today and say subsidy, people will, people, people will complain, people are suffering. We need to actually sit down and say, what are we going to do? We need to put the discos on their toes. We need to put everybody in the value chain on their toes. The rules of the road have to be applied equally and indiscriminately with people. And then that, that is, of course, as you mentioned earlier, we have a trust deficit. That's when the trust deficit starts to, to go down and people begin to see, yes, we have a net that is on our side. We have a, a presidency that sees the big picture and is actually doing what needs to be done to move to move the, the power sector and by implication, the country forward. So really, um, Five, five, five gigawatts to seven gigawatts to eight gigawatts. I think at the end of the day, we need to have a very, very ambitious plan going forward. And that plan cannot be done by the government alone. We need to have about 30, 30 gigawatts in another, in another 10, 15 years. And 30 gigawatts is nothing. We're a country of 200 million people. South Africa has, has, barely, has barely 40 million. They're, they're, they're doing much more than that. All so right. the challenge we need to have, and the government cannot invest alone. How much is our entire budget? So the government, while doing what they're doing today, has to, has to start designing a process that can enable us to have private investment in the power sector. All right, I Mr. Akira Gunde. At the end of the day, is the final, is the final de destination. All so right. Power, um, power, uh, uh, power uh, like we need to give Mr. Thing, like we're we're almost wearing, out of time. Like it is a product. It is, it, it, it is something that should be paid for. Many All right, Mr. As a social Mr. Thank you. I think we need to start moving both as a country and as people to see it as a product, as a commodity that should be paid for commercially. All right, uh, Mr. One of the, what, what's your two cents on this? Moving the power supply conversation forward and maybe... I mean, we should be talking about increasing, like uh, Mr. Akin Rogunde said, increasing uh, our megawatts as against talking on other issues. Yeah, I mean, uh, increasing megawatts is, uh, is, is key to getting service to people. I think that I've, I've always said that, you know, a tariff without a target verifiable by consumers is, um, is meaningless. You know, 5,000, 10,000 megawatts, I want to know whether it's 12 hours of service and when it comes. 
So it is important that we increase our megawatts, but the target of everything should be the service that is delivered to consumers. It is very important because that's where we get the trust and the measurement and we can actually tell what it is. And uh, to uh, Mr. Fulabi's uh, contribution about the fact that government cannot do it alone, we need the market, we need the investors to do this. Then um, it is important that when plans are made, that we stick to them. The deferral of tariffs is important in the face of, palliative, uh, of the COVID pandemic. But after that, you have to get back to that track so that capital can come in and support the industry. Uh, right. National Assembly intervention is very good. It's welcome when it's important. But at the same time, it has to come at a necessary junction because it frightens the uh, capital if people make plans and sit around and think that they are going to raise money and then we begin to play with the issues of tariffs. So, uh, I thought I made a point. It's a commodity that needs to be paid for and um, nothing stays. Uh, the prices of most things are going up. Uh, this one is being graduated, so uh, we welcome that. Uh, but again, what is important is that consumers, everyone, need to follow the process diligently. It's a lot of work that needs to be done. Indeed. They need to follow the process and make sure that what is being promised is being delivered and not just wait when there's a tariff hike and then, um, or, or, or plans for a change uh, to come. We need to follow the process and make sure that what is promised is being delivered and what is paid for. We certainly it's, have uh, a lot of value. work ahead of us. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Wonodi and Mr. Akinogunde, for your time and your very insightful contribution under breakfast. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice day.